Welcome to another of our studio videos. It's summertime, and as one of our favorite pastimes, we love taking little strolls in the neighborhood around our studio. Flowers are everywhere, and they're in full bloom. They look like little fairy hats or skirts. And that's what I want to show you today, is one of my fairy drawings from a book that I'm currently writing called Pippa and His Adventures in the Orange Orchard. I want to show you how I took a simple pencil drawing and I turned it into something a little bit more earthy, interesting, and magical. The colors I'm going to be using today are Perylene Green, Raw Umber, Brown Matter. All of my watercolors are from Windsor & Newton. You will need a large brush for the wash, an HB pencil, and a small watercolor brush. You will also need a watercolor painting palette. To make your wash, you're first going to need some raw umber, some water, and your large wash brush. I love to start my pictures out with a raw umber wash because it gives it a very subtle ochre tone without being too yellow. Depending on the kind of wash that you like, you can make it more pigmented or less pigmented. Just make sure that it's mixed up very well and you're not left with any pure pigment on the back of the brush. I often like to use a somewhat dirty palette, as I'm sure you can see here, because I'm often mixing my colors around and I like to have little hints here and there of other colors that I might be using in the future so that I don't have 100% pure colors. I really like to have mixtures of colors in there. So I like to have that little touch of red when I'm mixing up a green. Now your large watercolor brush can pick up a lot of water. So make sure that you wipe off a little bit on the edges because it can really become very saturated. You also want to make sure that that tape is taped down very well because when we go to add the wash later, this will help with the buckling effect. The looser our tape is, the more likely that water is to seep underneath our drawing and cause buckling from the back. So make sure that your tape has sealed your drawing nice and tightly. The first thing that you're going to want to do is take your watercolor brush that's been moderately saturated in that raw umber mixture and go directly over your picture. Make sure that you're going in an even back and forth motion. I like to go all in one direction for one pass and then go in one direction the other way if it needs it. This may seem scary at first and you will lose some of that detail that you have in your pencil drawing but I find that it harmonizes the piece into something that I find very, very interesting and really beautiful to work with. Now you will likely find that your paper has buckled. Now please do not be concerned at this stage. All that you need is a good hair dryer. Don't be afraid of getting too close to your picture because we really want to get in there and heat that paper up. Just make sure to keep the blow dryer constantly moving. This will stop your paper from burning and it will have the drying effect that we need. It will tighten the paper up and bring us back to that nice, flat, tight paper that we want to have. How to know when your paper is done and dry? It will be nice and flat. If you still have buckling here and there, keep blow drying. It will depend a little bit on how much water you used in your wash and also the quality and thickness of your paper to how long you're going to need to blow dry it for. So just once it's flat, then you can stop. Can you see the lovely harmonizing effect that this wash had? I really love the effect. I feel like it gives a kind of vintage quality, almost the effect of an etching or a lithograph print. It removes that top coat of graphite and you're left with the most essential elements of your graphite marks, which is why at the beginning I kind of enhanced my marks because I knew that I was going to be left with these kind of stronger marks at the end. And so you can keep that in mind even at your pencil drawing stage to maybe exaggerate your marks even a little bit 
because you know that when you go in to add that wash later on, you will lose a little bit of it. Now after you've harmonized the piece with that big wash, it may be that it became a little bit too harmonized. Every good drawing should have both unity and variety. Variety is the thing that gives the drawing life, and unity is the thing that ties it all together and says that this is one world, this is one idea. And sometimes you may find that after a wash over pencil drawing it's become a little bit too heavy on the side of unified. And that's why I've come in to add a few accents here and there to add a little bit more variety. And so we want to have both acting and living together in our picture. Here I'm working the entire picture just with an HB pencil. I really love this pencil because it can get me very light and delicate notes and very very specific and sharp lines while still getting dark accents if I ever find I need them. I make sure to sharpen my pencil often. You might not see it here on the screen, but I am sharpening constantly so that you can maintain that beautiful line quality and those lovely hatch marks. We do have a video on how to properly sharpen a pencil for academic style drawings. If you haven't watched it, we will include a link below that you can watch and find there. You may be wondering what this white piece of paper under my hand might be. This is in order for me to rest my hand on the canvas without blurring or blending my lines. I encourage you really to keep your hands off your piece as much as possible. Even if our hands are clean, we have oils that come out of our skin, and this can have a negative effect on our piece, both in the short term and in the long term. For me, the best way that I like to do that is either by having a mull stick or by using a piece of paper that I can rest my hand on if I need to go in for very, very small details like this piece. And for those of you who know my work a little bit, I'm sure that you can tell that I am a big fan of artists like Arthur Rackham. And so for me, after studying a little bit of his styles and his techniques, I like to combine them even if I'm working on a pencil drawing. I like those big nice washes of those ochres and umbers, and then coming in with little touches of color here and there, little accents of line. I find that kind of style absolutely magical, wonderful, and very very fun to play with. Now that I've finished with my accents with pencil, it's time to start with a little bit of color. Here I'm using the Perylene Green, very, very watered down. And I hope that you notice that when I put it down initially, it might seem very dark, but after it's had a moment to dry, it starts to become a little bit more faint. And that's really what I want with this piece. I want to have very light colors, faint, and harmonious all together. I don't want anything to stand out too much. And if you find that you are working and you've got a little too much water on your piece or that your paper is starting to buckle again, do not be afraid to take out that blow dryer and give it a wave. Now this piece is based on a full color watercolor piece that I've made for this book. And here I'm doing another little study of the same image again for just a little commission. And here I'm just kind of playing with some of the colors that are in the original. So it's not going to be a full color piece, but it's just going to have little hints here and there. And that's also the thing that made me think so much about Arthur Rackham when I was making this piece is that little hint here and there. I love color but I also love the hint of color as well because what that can do is play on the imagination. The lacking of something makes you dream or think a little bit more because you as the viewer have to kind of put it in there yourself. So it becomes a little bit more of a part of you, the viewer, because you can start to maybe imagine the yellow of the dandelion flowers, the blue of the sky, maybe the pink of the skin, all these things you can just kind of play with and hint at. And I love that little bit of mystery that you can add to a piece by actually what you take out of it.
And for those of you who are looking to learn a little bit more about the role of the beholder, I highly recommend that you purchase the book The Age of Insight by Eric Kandel. He talks a lot about how the viewer's brain works when they're looking at an artwork and it's things that you might not have thought about before. It's just absolutely fascinating. It's given me all sorts of new ideas when it comes to the creation of my work as well. Just finding out a little bit more about what goes on inside the viewer's brain. I often like to add little rosy or ochre or peachy notes to places that tend to collect a little bit more blood when we're working with figures. So places like the ear, the lips, the cheeks, the nose, the shoulder, elbow, hands, knees, and feet. These are places that either where the blood vessels are a little bit closer to the surface, like the knees, but also places maybe like the shoulder where they, we tend to maybe get a little bit more sun, a little bit more color. This is something that uh, I really find goes a very, very long way when I'm working with, uh, especially with limited color pieces like this one. It just gives that little hint again to trigger the imagination. And to add some little extra fun notes, I love to add a little bit of white gouache in there as well. Gouache was one of the first pieces that I learned to work with really well, and I just really love watercolor and gouache. Um, it's a lot of fun. And essentially all that gouache is is really just an opaque version of watercolor. And you can make colored gouache just by adding white gouache with your regular watercolor. You can also purchase colored gouache as well. And since I'm working on this mid-tone background, when I go to add my white gouache, it's gonna stand out. If you're working with tools like white gouache or white chalk or anything of this sort, make sure that your paper has a dark enough tone on it for it to stand out. Otherwise, it can have a cooling effect on the paper rather than a lighting effect. Here I'm just adding a few extra highlights with the white gouache just around on the dandelions and on his hat. I'm also adding just a few little touches with the white gouache on the border as well. This will help to tie the two together. After adding a few touches with the white gouache, I need to come back in with a few additional elements with the graphite pencil.
Here I'm adding a little bit more of a stronger red. And I'm adding this so that even when the viewer is at a distance, my picture will still have a little bit more of a stronger impact even at that distance. I often work in passes on my pictures. I do one pass where I just get a general idea of how my picture is working. So I've added some reds before in a couple of these key places, but now that I've kind of worked all over it, I need to come back in and adjust. After I've adjusted a little bit more, I find that it still needs just a little bit more color. So I've decided to add a little bit more color in the background with the yellow of the dandelions and the blue of the sky. In addition to the perylene green, the brown matter, the raw umber, I'm also adding here yellow ochre and cobalt blue. Even though I want to add more color at this point in my picture, I'm aiming to not add too many and to try to keep my palette as simple as possible, even with the addition of a few extra colors. I also come in to add a little bit of that same ochre into the border just to tie a little bit of the interior picture with Pippa to the border itself. This picture was a lot of fun to work with, with the idea of pattern and also a realistic image and tying those two together. Another one of my favorite artists are Alphonse Mucha and Gustav Klimt. They're both artists that combine the idea of realism and pattern. And so you can also think about that idea as they're combining 3D with 2D. And this is something I really enjoy playing with in my work as well. And there you have it. There is my finished watercolor wash for Pippa and the Dandelions. We hope that you liked this video and please hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you enjoyed it. And there will be many more to come on both little tips here and there and progression images like this one.